This is Mrs. Murphy, your instructor here at Weber State University. Today I'm going to talk a little bit about CSS. Cascading style sheets, or CSS, is used to format HTML documents. The HTML is mainly for the content of the document, and CSS is for the formatting of the document. It's a way of separating the content code from the formatting code. There's three types of CSS. Depending on the place where you place the code, will affect different levels of HTML code. Uh, an inline is what we've been doing so far. This is when the CSS style attribute is used, and the CSS is placed right in that particular tag, just like we've done style equals, and then we've put the style in the body tag. Uh, this just styles the one element on the page. Now, in the example below, we change the body tag to have a background color and a text color. Now, the body is a parent tag for all of the tags on the page. Therefore, all of the tags on the page will have the same background color. In the example, an H1 has a background color of white. Since there's not any tags embedded inside the H1 tag, then that's going to be the only thing with the white background on the page. It wouldn't include the paragraph tag or anything like any other tags on the page. It would have the style, the paragraph would have the styling of the body tag. So you can see the inline style has the highest priority. Uh, it overrides any styling of its parent element, and it also overrides any styling of internal and external CSS. Internal CSS will style the entire HTML document. It's placed in the head of the document using the style tag, and it will style any element on the page. We used a little bit of internal CSS when we did the tables example. It was a little too much to place the border style in every cell in the table, so we stylized every cell on the page using an internal style sheet. An external style sheet can stylize an entire website. In this case, the CSS is located in an external document, and all the page that use CSS will link to the CSS document. It makes updating the, the style of the website a lot easier. The webmaster only needs to change the CSS in one file, and it will update the design of the entire website. So here we have an HTML link tag to specify the location of the external CSS document. Link tags placed in the head of the document. The rel attribute specifies the relationship of the link that it will be a style sheet. The type of the document is plain text CSS document. The href is a link to the location of the file. The CSS document needs to be in the same directory of the web page in order for this to work. Here's an example of an external CSS document. Notice there's no HTML tags on the page, it's just a plain document with CSS rules. You can specify the care set of the document using the ampersand. Now here we have some styling for an H2 header tag. We're going to demonstrate some of the syntax of the CSS document. This styling is called a CSS rule. You can have many CSS rules in your external style sheet. In fact, it's full of rules. You can have a rule for the body tag, other header tags, link tags. The selector is what's going to determine the CSS, which CSS elements get the style. In this case, it's for the H2 tag on the site. You could very easily change the selector out to any HTML tag, an H1 tag, a P tag, an A tag, any one you want. Now, if you notice on this page, the H2 does not have greater than or less than alligator brackets, you know, those weird less than greater than signs. There's no tags on this. The declarations are what define what the selectors are going to look like. Now those are curly or whatever mustache brackets that begin and end the HTML rule. Uh, all of the selectors are inside of these particular brackets. And every declaration has to end in a semicolon. You know, the winking eyes if you're doing those little emoticons. Each declaration has a property and a value. The property and value are separated with a colon, you know, the regular eyes and a smiley. Okay, so now that you know a little bit about CSS, let's walk you through the example to show you how it works. To start off with, I've got just an HTML document. This is a little bit more advanced than you've got, but it's from a site called CSSZenGarden.com. And if you go to that website, it's a really cool example of external style sheets. It has a single HTML document, and as you click on the different links, they've attached different uh, CSS documents and it shows you, uh, it's amazing what it shows you, that, that the power of CSS can do to a web page. You've got some really cool looking websites all just modifying the CSS 
of the same exact HTML document. Well, today we're going to take it, and I've taken that HTML code, and I've simplified it quite a bit, but we're going to uh, just add some basic CSS to this, and hopefully you'll be able to kind of modify what I give you here for your own assignment. I'm not expecting you to have some fantastic web page. Uh, especially since this is not a web design class, this is just an intro class. But I do want you to just try and play with around with it and try and change some colors and some fonts and stuff like that and see what you can do with, with CSS. All right, to start with, we have to add our, our link tag. And what this will do is it will link to our style sheet. So I'm going to put this, this is in my head of my document. It could be after the meta, after the title, just anywhere in the, in the head of the document. And in this particular situation, I'm calling the page mystyle.css. That means I have to create a file called mystyle.css. So I'm going to go File New here, and we're going to save this. And it has to be saved in the exact same directory as your web page. And since I have it called mystyle.css in the code, that's what I have to name the file. Okay, the first thing in my external document is I'm going to put in my care set. That way it specifies the encoding of the document. Now for the body tag, I'm going to override it so it has a background color and a font. So here's my selector for my body, and I've given it a background color, and this is just one I found on, this color is just something I found on a color scheme generator. Then I gave it to Homo a nice clean font. So if I save this document, I'm going to control S this here and refresh this over here, it doesn't work. Why doesn't it work? How come it doesn't work when I'm showing the example? Darn it. I probably forgot to save this file. So I'm going to save this file and now see if it works. Yay! Okay. Phew! Okay. So now I've got my body and it's, got, it's changed the font and it's changed the background color. Let's put in another selector. We're going to go back and look at this HTML page for a second. This has, in the body, it has div with an ID of container. Anytime you have ID, it allows you to name a particular tag. And you can name it anything you want. Name it peanut butter and jelly for all it matters, you know. But it's best to keep it something kind of descriptive. In this case, I want a container around my HTML document just to kind of use white space a little bit more effectively. So anytime you have a self-named selector, you put a pound sign in front of it. And so I'm going to do our hashtag, excuse me, that's what we call it these days. I'm going to give it a width just so we can kind of see what it is. We'll do 800 pixels. We'll do it. Give it a margin auto. What a margin auto does is it specifies the same margin on each side. So it'll basically center this container and limit all of my content to 800 pixels. It won't text align center the the, the the typing on the page, it'll just make the con the container in the middle the same. And like, let me show you the background color for it, um, so we can kind of tell what I'm talking about. Okay, so I've given it a padding of 20 pixels and a background color, just so you can see what I'm talking about. All right, so now here's my container, and my container is in the middle of the screen, and and. It doesn't seem to be centering there. Oh, that's because my screen was wider than I thought it was. Um, there we go. So it centers the container in the screen. Just kind of give it a, a nice, nice little look, uh, giving my using white space a little bit more effectively. Okay, padding and margin are very similar. Just talk just for a second. You buy something from Amazon and it has all these cute little air bubble things inside of it. That's the padding. The, the padding protects whatever you buy from getting mashed up in the screen. Now the margin is the space between each of your Amazon boxes as you line the bump on the page. So basically the padding is inside the container and the margin is outside of the container. So if I give this a huge padding just so we could see, I'm going to change it to 50 really quick, you'll be able to see that this over here, as soon as I refresh it, has more space on the inside of the container. If I changed the margin, it would give me more space on the outside of the container. In this case, you wouldn't be able to see anything. All right. So that is my container. Now this particular HTML document has a header. So inside my header, I have an H1 and an H2 tag. Um, 
but before I do that, I wanted to show you one one kind of fun CSS that we can do. Uh, this doesn't work on every browser, just so you know, but a border radius kind of gives off these cute little rounded corners just to make so my web page doesn't look so boxy. All right, now I was going to tell you about the header. The header, there's a header tag, and all this is is header with a closing header. And inside it, I've got an H1 and an H2. This is kind of like a, a tag that specifies this is where the header of the document is. So if I want to stylize that header, I can and make it kind of nice. In this case, I'm just going to give it a different background color and those little rounded corners so we can kind of just set it apart from the rest. Oh, that looks terrible. What do you think? Maybe we better add some padding to make sure that uh, there's some more space there. And if you remember, padding is inside the container. Let's give it like 30 pixels, see what that kind of looks like. Oh, that looks much better. What do you think? All right, so there's my header. And you can stylize pretty much H any tag you want. So I know I have some H1s and some H2s on there. Let's go ahead and stylize those. In this particular situation, I just made my H1 tags really big by making the font size 48 point. Now this one's kind of a fun one, a text shadow. Give you could have a, a you know the shadowing effect. Uh, you can give your your tags shadow effects, and I put it in the center and changed the color on the H2 tag. I once again centered it and gave it a, a color. It just kind of makes it look a little nicer. So now I've got this CSS that has a, a shadow behind it, and then eh, it kind of it's getting there. Don't you think this looks a little nicer? Okay, a last one I'm going to show you for the day, and then we'll call it good. As I said, we're just this just an intro class. Is I've got all these links that are my my default color basically. We can style override those. If you remember, those are A tags. So if I want to stylize those, I could say A, and it would give me a. I'm saying text decoration none. That means don't underline them. I don't like really when links are underlined. I can obviously see their links. You don't have to underline them for me. So now I've given them just a, a standard color, and they're no longer underlined. I have another fun one we can do, and that is sometimes when you click on links, or when you hover over the links, they change color, just kind of an indicator. So here I have an A colon hover, no spaces in there. And all that does is it changes the color slightly to a different color whenever you hover over it. So now, as I hover over these, it shows that, oh, they are links indeed, because look, I can hover over them. Okay, there is our beautifully designed, super simple Zen Garden HTML document. Um, I haven't given you too much. I'll put in some links to some resources that you can look to if you want to experiment with some more CSS designs. But I'll, all I care is you, you just play around with it. Have fun with it. This is this is the one time where I'm not going to be greeting you on what it looks like. You know, this is, it's, can you just try it and play with it? Well, good luck with the assignment, and we shall see you next time.